earlier today we had a you know a group of people kind of on the ai side were able to join and we had a productive discussion i think um the uh, we focused that was more focused on the intellectual merit side of things than kind of organizational uh issues um so let, let me um let me pull up this uh email that i sent recently um so yeah so first i just say to those of you that i haven't already told you sorry for that uh for leading to some inefficient time usage there i was planned on getting things together on friday for monday but then had some kind of personal thing popped up that uh, was a bit of a, a bit urgent and i just kind of took away my friday and then i had vacation so um um so in in that message that i sent on whatever monday i think this was my like a proposed outline um i went back uh, uh, more closely before this meeting and looking at the actual, um, uh, um, what you call it, uh, the 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 solicitation, um, and uh, there are some more sections in here that I didn't realize that uh, or didn't remember that we had to like hit on so specifically. So, the broader impacts section, for instance, if you can see this, has more structure than what, what I'm used to. So it has to have these three subsections in it. Um, so that was not reflected when I gave this kind of uh, quick estimate, but for the most part, this fits pretty well. Uh, 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 I mean, th this outline that I shared fits pretty well, the required format from NSF. Uh, and, and so I went into the project description document. I made a backup of the original one so that it's not modified. And I just started creating a, a new outline. Um, so I'm just going to scroll through it real quick. So. Um, I hope I wanted to get names attached to this. I was planning on just tagging people here with like the, you know, the Google Docs thing. That's not all done, but we can do it kind of during this meeting or afterwards. Um, the current, this current page count, I think is, uh, yeah, okay. Well, if this is one page, it's going to be fine. If this intro is two pages, it's going to be one page over. Okay, so maybe we should cut from somewhere else. So this that's something we can discuss a little bit. Um, so there's the, and the blue, as before, is kind of like excerpts from the, you know, from the solicitation. So, you know, we need one or two pages to give the big picture. Um, and that should hit on, you know, obviously, like the importance of climate and et cetera, and then also the potential for AI to uh, have a role here. Um, then there's the description of the plan of the Institute. I used here, and this is relevant for people writing, I'm using the like Google Docs, you know, heading sections here to, to give a, uh, structure to the document. So you see the outline here on the left. Um, so um, <clears throat> so in the current page count, the, the main you know, research plan uh, intellectual merit part of the proposal is, is roughly 18 out of the 25 pages. Um, we, can, we can discuss if this needs to be rebalanced, but okay, that's what we have here. Um, it includes quite a few things that are repetitive with other parts of the proposal, which is kind of annoying. So, for instance, they want us to identify key contributors, but there's also a section about key personnel. They want us to talk about the role of everyone, but there's also a section about a management plan. They want us to talk about our plans to include, you know, how we're going to distribute knowledge, but there's a separate section about knowledge sharing. So uh, I think hopefully we can not be too duplicative in this part and mainly reference those other parts, but I'm just kind of calling it out. Um, I think that this could be, this section here is not, strictly what you know they, they don't provide more detail under description of the research plan of the institute i'm providing this extra structure so i thought that the first thing that we could do and this is kind of like an extended introduction so depending on how we do things this is the extended part of the introduction and so that we have kind of three pages of introduction or we can go and change this to just one page um and then this is kind of the extended part but here what we need to do I think before we get into the specifics of the AI themes, which follows next, so we have the our three themes, uh, it would we should have some text talking about the kind of how the application areas are related to the foundational AI research and 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 something you know along the lines maybe of a figure about some you know deliberate uh, effort and and procedure that we're going to use to try to describe how application areas inform the foundational 
research, which is like the, the meaning of use inspired research, basically. So we need to like say some more here. Um, we can come back to it in a second, but in that small group discussion document, <clears throat> this is what many of you have already seen. Um, I added a news section here called cross cutting table where the rows are the five application areas and the columns are the themes and um and the um and the uh um and the uh I, this was sort of my attempt at reading through what's been provided or my from discussions that i've had of extracting what i thought were kind of the interesting ai topics for the different themes and kind of connecting things together um, um <clears throat> uh, one thing that came out of that is that i think we should switch the order of the ai themes uh, so that theme one is the multi-scale multimodal data uh, because many in many cases what that theme is about is really like the machine learning models and the models particularly the ones that incorporate uncertainty uh, then feed into decision making under uncertainty so certainly for like for uh, the soil and uh, and forestry for for instance they're, they're, you, you, they they you need to do the modeling problem. The multi-scale modeling problem involves how do you incorporate, you know, model the uncertainty because it's then used later in a decision-making context. So I think it flows better that way. There's several places where that also touch, you know, there's cross cuts between uh, the trustworthy type theme and there's, there's various cross cuts that we can try to point out. But anyways, this was, this is in that small group discussions that has some more details, but I'm going to go back to the project description. So. In this table, I switched the order around. So theme one is we can re revisit the, uh, the the naming here, but is the multi-scale, multimodal, then decision making, and then the kind of trustworthy and communication theme. Um, okay, so then we get it, it seems like before I had structured it so that the application areas were first, and then we kind of abstract the AI themes and then address the AI themes. But I think, well, I'm curious what people think, but after cogitating on it for a little bit, I think it will do better if we uh, hit the AI themes first. Uh, and certainly, at least in the guidance that kind of reads that way, you know, clearly specify the, the foundational AI, you know, research themes, why they were selected, and, you know, how, well, th this part, whatever, is not, not so relevant, but like, you know, what are the themes and why were they selected? And then later they say convey how these will benefit and contribute to the related sectors and chosen use inspired research context. So, so I think it maybe flows better if we go themes for well, like big picture about how what we mean by use inspired, the A three AI themes and why we chose them, and then them in context of these areas. So that's my proposal. Um, I had in my little email here a timeline or work plan kind of at the bottom. Uh, oftentimes when writing proposals, I've kind of had all the narrative and then there's this kind of work plan at the end, but um, we could do it either way, but uh, they say they want in the, you know, in this section, if I go back to the top in this section, they say they want the timeline, a five-year timeline. So I figure we might as well stick it there. Okay, so we can stick the timeline here. Uh, then there's a broader impact section and they want, this is a little bit weird. We had a side discussion about broader impacts. And the way we were talking about it, we had sort of three different types of activities. One was like a interaction with kind of uh, commercial ag people and, and, and consultants and things like that. And then we had a part that was about, uh, uh, you know, uh, listening sessions, uh, uh, trustworthiness, uh, broadening participation, uh, various stuff like that, uh, where we could include, for instance, some of the citizen science type projects potentially and then there was another part that was going to be maybe more education outreach like but that was not so well developed the last you know the last that we you know that we heard um i'm oh, sorry I, i'm i guess the extension part paul correct me if i'm wrong the extension connection is sitting largely in the, the first of those that i mentioned is that right yeah yeah, yeah. okay so then um but uh, okay i had overlooked that the they have this specific uh, kind of, they want us to hit on these three things. So I have not had enough time to really go back and clearly see if this is going to fit super well. The, the, what I can say, <clears throat> the broadening participation part, I think fits pretty well with what we had in, 
in mind with citizen science and listening sessions and stuff like uh, along those lines. Um, <clears throat> the education and workforce development, I have not thought enough about it. We have the K-12 stuff, which would obviously fit here, but there's also professionals, well, I don't know. We have to think about if the, the part that's about sort of training and engaging with the agriculture consultants and stuff like that, if that's gonna fit in here or not. It could be, it could be that we train a new breed of consultants that go do this, you know, we pitch it that way or something. Um, okay, um, but I think, uh, okay. And then the last part here is collaboration and knowledge transfer, which uh, from my brief reading of this part is the, uh, it's less, you know, this can include some of the things that, uh, that that came up in our discussion earlier today in the AI Institute, in particular, uh, Chris, you know, was talking about, could we do some things related to challenges and, uh, and trying to build a community, uh, you know, around these kinds of topics? Uh, and, and uh, you know, how are we, so that's, you know, in our pre-proposal, we had talked about uh, curating data sets that could be good for benchmarks and, and and challenges and things like that. And while it didn't read super well, uh, I mean, review super well in the pre-proposal, um, the people reviewing that we have more space here and the people that are reviewing this are gonna be looking at these guidelines, right? So here it's specifically talking about how are we going to help do that kind of stuff, right? So um, so I think maybe some of those activities, you know, can that can go in here in terms of like community building, and engaging and stuff like that. So we've discussed them and I think that probably fits in here. I don't, um, okay, and then, okay, then we're kind of, then they, again, this is the NSF prescribed, they key personnel management and integration plan. Um, so here's the, you know, key personnel, basically the people, we have some text already that kind of describes people very succinctly. We can make some kind of, they say they want a diagram. Uh, they are about the kind of org chart like story um, and uh, we've discussed this some, we, we need to make the figure and we need to like all agree on what we've discussed. And then there's a management plan here. Um, this text, uh, okay, so here there's, uh, this is, here's the, where integrate shows up, I guess. Um, um, okay, right. So that's, that's the end of the, the section. So if we take the, add up these uh, pages, so there's, you know, there's three pages here uh, for, uh, personnel and management and integration plan. This part we really can't skimp on too much because in the reviewing, you know, they, they're looking at us as an institute and we need to like talk about how we're going to operate as an institute. And if we, if we, and, and we have to probably include some figures here. So they're going to eat up a lot of space. And if I think if we cut too much here, it's going to hurt us. So I think this is probably three pages. Um, okay, then broader impacts is half of the review criteria for these proposals. So the fact that it's only like, you know, three pages is maybe a little short, but uh, I'm curious what people think, but okay, it, it at least fits the three topics here. So if we can fit these three topics in three pages, it's pretty clean. Um, then, then I guess in terms of space, there's a question of, you know, I just kind of, it seems nice and easy and symmetric to give two pages per topic here. Um, we could potentially try to squeeze these down a little bit and try to make the application areas be more like, I don't know, eight pages instead of 10 pages. And that would give us some more room to breathe. Um, um, again, I'm curious what people think. Uh, the timeline is probably going to need a figure and some text. So it's probably going to be a page. It's hard to see how it's not going to take a page. Um, the AI themes, I don't think, you know, since it's an AI institute and this is this part in the proposal, uh, you know, is in, uh, that's the part that's in bold <laughs> on the NSF website, right? So we probably shouldn't uh, underdo that, right? So um, so given the three themes, two pages each, six pages seems pretty reasonable. <clears throat> so in this, this outline, this would be one page too long. So either this needs to go to one page, right? Or we leave it at two and we try to squeeze down a little bit so that the uh, application areas is maybe, you know, eight or nine pages. Um, okay, so I, I'm going to pause there. Sorry, I kind of, uh, that was my one unidirectional knowledge transfer section. Um, the floor is open for people who have comments, questions.
Oh, I see there's comments that have been coming in. I haven't, uh, I wasn't reading them as it came. Okay. No, I think that's previous. This is, I'm hoping, I'm glad this is what I was hoping we could get to, Kyle. Um, this is, I think people were asking for last time. Um, I actually, I'm curious if anyone has a sense of the application areas, cutting them down a little bit, because I, I am worried about that the introduction, but also that broader impact section, making sure we have enough, if that's literally half of the criteria in terms of points, we better make sure we do that right. Um, yeah, my, my, my read on my read on the, the broader impacts, the way it affects things is that um, from being in these panels and having like led some of these panels, and I'm sure, well, not everyone here has been as invo involved in NSF proposals in particular. So this is like, uh, so if other people have NSF experiences, they would like to share and Joao is here today and he has been on some of these joint NSF USDA ones, I believe. But the, um, in, in my experience, at least in, in the fields that I've been there, uh, the, you know, the panelists send in review score there, you know, they have to review by, according to a certain, you know, set of criteria. And in the end, there's some, kind of an overall score, score for intellectual merit and an overall, overall score for uh, broader impacts that's usually like kind of a scale from one to five or something and then they basically ag aggregate that from all of the you know people that submitted uh, reports to the panel and then there's three people on the panel uh, there's like a scribe that takes notes and then two people that ha that uh, have read it carefully and and like you know uh, comment and they read you know they've read it themselves and they read the reports from the different people and they kind of make an overall you know, suggestion, then the panel gets to, you know, comment for a little bit. And, uh, and then once, once that's done, you, you bit basically like a overall score for intellectual merit and broader impact from the entire panel. And then they oftentimes take post-its up on a board and they kind of, or, you know, sort them left to right, basically something like that. Right. And, and so, and then it starts to group. And then that original grouping, if you score low and, and broader impacts, you know, you go kind of in the middle somewhere and that's like not necessarily a good place to start, right? Um, so if you score well on the broader impacts, then you're more to the right, which is a good place to be. And then the intellectual merit part mainly sorts it out from that part. That's kind of, so I think that's how I've seen it go play out. Um, <clears throat> okay, so a few people are agreeing. So if we, so one possibility would be, you know, we can either, Forestry and soil, they're different, but they had a lot of common themes. Uh, I don't know that it makes sense to, you know, we could either try to merge something so it's not five, or we can leave it as five and, and maybe put these as one each or something, or I don't know. I'm just thinking, does anyone have any proposals here? Or they could be one and a half pages a piece or something like that. That would save us. That would be symmetric still. Yeah, I think, Kai, I think you're right. I think we have, uh, Kai Payne's got a comment. We got to get yeah. drafts down, um, and then we just cram them into nine, eight, nine pages, and just make it work. Um, okay. Um, I, I think we should all have a goal of trying to write two plus, and then the kind final committee will take that and shrink it down. Um, <clears throat> in the end, I, I, it's always easier to have too much and shrink it than it is to have to fluff. And I don't think we'll have mm -hmm. a fluffing problem here. And so, but I, so I, what I'm really saying, write mm -hmm. with two, two and a half plus pages and then we'll shrink it down as best we can. Yeah. 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 Not too much. <laughs> no, I don't want eight pages and we have yeah. to make it to one. That's yeah. just a waste okay, of so time. If we don't aim for eight pages total in this section, right, then then we could we could make this be four for broader impacts. As long as we keep the two at the beginning. And oh. the two at the beginning, yeah. I think that's... that was Michael's vote. And I, I agree. Yeah. A lot of these things I just feel like it's the that first couple of pages are hugely important in terms of the feel. They give you the feel of what these people want and you quickly decide, yeah, this looks promising or not. And then it comes down to the mechanics, like do you fit the criterion that they use, or the various criteria they use. Uh, but I think that selling point of the introduction part and then the visual feel of the overall proposal will be huge. Yeah, okay. All right, so, so then I think that that part is, is pretty good. Um, in terms of, okay, I need to like tag people uh, here, but I think for for the the sorry for the application areas, I think we know who we. Want. I mean, we already have names kind of attached in the small group doc. I just need to carry them over here. Um, 
for the uh, for this, you know, this is sort of Yelena, Jim, and Michael primarily, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, here, I guess we have uh, Chris and and um, um, uh, Young Jay, right? Um, yep. And then um, I'm wrong. Oh, sorry, I'm just uh, trying to cross-reference lots of things in my mind at the same time. Um, someone was saying something just a second ago. Uh, and Rob Novak, right? Yeah, yeah, Rob, you know, it sits in several places. So one thing that came up uh, in our discussions uh, recently on the on the AI side, which was, I thought, use, useful, was that we talked a little bit about, in terms of, you know, pitch, high-level pitch, um, things that, in, you know, and also a place where we maybe have some competitive advantage or something is about sort of... Uh, integrating expertise and human in the loop and kind of human interaction broadly, broadly speaking. So, so examples were incorporating, you know, domain expertise, which is a like, uh, which, so a lot of the kind of optimization research that, you know, Michael and Jim uh, do have a very natural way of incorporating, you know, expert knowledge into them. Uh, and so, um, and so we're going to extend that, right? And so that kind of decision-making part, that's nice. There's also, uh, in terms of active learning and, uh, you know, having humans involved in annotating or labeling data, there's that part uh, where, there's, uh, where there's some expertise. Um, and then there's, uh, and that also then kind of naturally ties into the trustworthy component of, as humans are, you know, as real people, we're engaging people in as part of the process. Um, okay, I'm just reading at the, okay, so I kind of came up with, it wasn't really, we, we, we need to, we, we haven't had enough time to digest exactly how that would be uh, threaded in. That's a place that Rob would, uh, uh, well, several of us have things, but we, in, the, in our meeting, we were talking about Rob could potentially take some ownership of that theme, but we need to figure out where to incorporate that into here. Um, mm -hmm. um, so I see that Craig is here, um, and also, so two quick things on a, one is that, uh, well, Joao, like I know that you guys have had meetings and you've done a lot, but there's, it's not really reflected some, I mean, there's some text here, which I think was early, but if you could like link to whatever document that you're you're cooking, it would be helpful. Um, and that applies to everyone. If you have some side document, uh, please add it to the small group discussion, uh, you know, document uh, is just a link or something like that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do this, uh, Kai, this week. I, I mean, be, I'll be adding the our two pages and maybe two and a half pages. I'll be sharing these with Michael and EJ as well, so they can add uh, their component on. Okay, but I think I mean, well, unless you're against it, if you have some kind of running notes, it would be nice to share them sooner than later because from a from an organizational point of view, it's nice to be able to uh, see where you know where we stand. The actual like pristine text can come later this week. That's no no problem. Okay. So, so this then, is. Yeah, this is, right. so just a question about this is in terms of, I mean, we have, well, I haven't started, so I have to get the, the group together, but we'll, we'll get it done, of course. But the thing is, is for other sections, are you just mainly looking for like, in our case, the food security group, just writing up for those page and a half or two pages and nothing, you talked about these other areas. Did you want something from each of the groups to try to contribute to those in some way? Or yes, would yes. you kind of be identifying for us later saying, here's what I want from you? Well, so in this, in this document that's up currently, there's a was a kind of a template, and I think if I go to the food security section here, okay, there's some there's some, I grabbed some text I think from the pre-proposal right, right, right. that that was me, but like the uh, there's some names here, and then there were these prompts of essentially some questions uh, that I, I will probably it would be nice to have that stuff here so that for people that are writing introduction or just making sure that like the we have. We don't look like a laundry list of random things, but we we really like uh, focus on specific themes and we try to craft them well. It would be great to have like answers to this. Um, I was going to ask you, Craig, that we had this little bit of an exchange, but the, in the pre-proposal there was focus on on uh, SNAP and also a little bit of like causal inference related topics here. Um, but I don't. But then you were saying you thought maybe that wasn't good and potentially pivoting to some other notion of food security and maybe something, where does it, where does that stand now? So as what we had talked about was kind of having food security be an overarching theme is how soils, crops, forestry and livestock 
all fit into our goals to attain food security and making it more of a global discussion about food security. Because as we talked about, is that to be blunt, is that these things won't have much of an impact on U.S. consumers, but they will have a pretty big impact on global food security issues. So putting it, changing around the context a bit, and I'll make it, yeah. So, so that's, that's what we had planned to do. Okay. The, um, so you, you used global possibly in two ways there. I mean, the latter one was global as in the sense of the earth, but the first global, was it in the sense of globally in the context of the proposal? That like how food security and soil and like all this feeds into food security? Right. So uh, I can send it to you. I, I wrote something up about this and just the general idea about how there can be tensions between climate smart policies and food production um, and food prices and just talk about some of how these things do and don't fit together. Um, so that's in that global sense is looking at right. how all these things intersect with food security. So right. this won't really be a standalone component anymore. I see. So, I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, I think that on one hand, I, 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 I agree and, and like uh, what to say. I mean, certainly true that, <laughs> you know, uh, in terms of in terms of the proposal and how it like connects with the various things, um, there's one part in which we can talk about how all of these different topics feed into the topic. I mean, like uh, livestock and forestry and soil feed into food security. Right, right. Um, that's, I think, easy to write. I mean, you could write a lot there, but it's not necessarily, uh, um, well, I mean, in, in terms of how it's connected back to the like AI themes or something like that. I did feel that the the SNAP type stuff when it, I mean, and this is not my ex expertise, but just from our earlier discussions, the, the part that has to do with kind of supply chain management and sending things and not have a bunch of wasted food and stuff like that. And like, who should get the food, all of those kinds of issues, that, that does fit in a decision-making under uncertainty theme very right. well. So I had I had previously imagined that there would be, that the food security section would have some stuff describing that problem that, that Jim and Michael would be able to like kind of hit out of the park. But like, if, uh, if that's not gonna be the case, then we need to know, or we can figure out both. We can do both maybe, I don't know. Right. I I agree. I, including that, I think would be great because it does. It also does tie into all these. You know, how do you get these changes? How do you get these to the market and stuff like this? And it wasn't that we we're going to jettison completely the idea of SNAP, but the problem is with SNAP since it's a very specific program and just trying to generate, you know, more resources for low-income households to to purchase more food is that it didn't seem to have quite the connection to the other aspects of this proposal. Whereas the supply chain stuff definitely would have ties into this other stuff. So I think thinking about food security in, on supply chain issues would be great along with, um, yeah, so I think it'd be great. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna write it here. I, yeah, so if if you plan on jettisoning that, please let us know soon because like I, I'm, I'm, I think it fits really well and it would be great to keep it from my point of view. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because I was involved no, in the region. I mean, Craig, we're talking about supply chain, and I can easily see how that's an issue in food security and stuff. But I and and I can see how I could have algorithms that contribute to that, or Michael might. But do we have experts here who are interested in the food side of that and, and have expertise in that? Because that's the part I, I didn't hear anything about yet before. Yeah, I was going to jump on. That's Sheldon Dew was originally um, wanted to work on that, and then he um, kind of stalled, and he's been thinking more about. He's got a data set he wants to use and it has about loads and stuff. And there's another colleague I could pull in to bring in that supply chain expertise. Um, and Sheldon has shifted to thinking about extreme events on the tails of distributions and stuff um, in, in correlation among uh, the, that spatial temporal autocorrelation problem. I, I think I'm gonna reach, he's not on right now. I'll, talk, I'll reach out to him and we'll try to figure something out there on the supply chain side. Cause I think Kyle's right. I think it's gonna be important. Right, and uh -huh. by no means did I mean to imply that we weren't be looking at supply chain. I guess I was just thinking the specific focus on SNAP seems a bit astray from some of the other things, especially since okay. I didn't see the AI connection to that. But I think that this will, I think this will be more seamless now in terms of this, because I think supply chain, for example, ties more closely into issues pertaining to crops than say SNAP did. Okay, okay, yeah, great. That's fine with me. Um, and then I, I do think that 
having, you know, some text, there's a little bit of a question of where it goes. Uh, the part that's about how all of these things bubble into food security in the broad sense, uh, and, and also globally, I think Catherine maybe wanted to comment on something like that. Um, not, oh, not, not that. globally, yeah. um, but still, I mean, globally makes uh, a lot of sense as we've discussed before. But one idea that I had, um, which I didn't, uh, didn't think about earlier was, we've been working with Maui United Way. Um, uh, they're, they have a, a strong program that they started in, uh, in Hawaii. And the idea, um, I guess, after the pandemic, due to lockdowns and stuff like that, Hawaii experienced probably the most extreme food insecurity, and it's directly related to uh, supply chains. And because mostly they import a lot of their food in Hawaii, and there's been this conversion, I mean, with the history with plantations and then conversion into more there's more touristy type supply things and the more local communities kind of afford the food that's available. Um, one thought that I had was, you know, from a local perspective, maybe thinking about writing something, if we think about it as a use case that ties into maybe broader impact or um, broader community engagement would be to write this is maybe a use case where we would, you know, different products or different uh, efforts coming out of the different components would feed into this food security dashboard that they've been developing. So the way the dashboard is right now, it's purely just a GIS based dashboard with existing product like maps and, and, and stuff like that. And what we've been discussing with them more recently is updating like their crop plan, crop type maps. And, um, but we've had, you know, other things is trying to figure out like where the food comes from um, and the linkages with uh, what people have access to, how food is available. So there's like some interesting things that is a more local perspective of food, uh, food security, which is not similar to what will be like mainland US, which I think might be interesting to look into um, as well. So I was gonna write something along those lines. But then one thought that came to my mind is from the different groups, um, you know, looking at crops, livestock, soils, um, what, in terms of if you think about like broader impacts or utility or knowledge transfer, like what are those, and I'm, I always think about in terms of products, like what are those products that we see different research groups um, working on that could integrate into that kind of uh, decision support? for example. Yeah. Uh, you, I don't know if that disorganizes everything. <laughs> oh, no, I think it, it's a, it's another thing that I think makes, I mean, personally, I think it makes a lot of sense. There's a question of like how we integrate it into the story that it, it I agree with you that it, it fits well also in the kind of these broadening participation and knowledge transfer and these kinds of themes as well, which is always good. Um, and it, it, uh, I have to digest that a little bit more to think about like how, if it would, I think if, you know, having a connection to another food security uh, group, especially, you know, that's and something that's else that's not in the, you know, in Wisconsin does look kind of broad. The, the, it's always just a trade-off between looking like yet another random, com, you know, appendage and, and looking like a, it's something that makes sense. But it, I think the narrative does make sense. Um, I don't Craig, you want to come on? So I was going to say, actually, this funny is coincidentally is I just gave a presentation to the Hawaii Food Bank and some of the issues they were facing. Fortunately, things didn't turn out that bad in Hawaii. Actually, food insecurity rates didn't increase during COVID. So overall, it was good news that things that it was so, so resilient that things didn't get hurt that much. So I think that can be part of our story, too, is that things we didn't see increases in food insecurity in Hawaii during COVID, just like most of the country. We didn't see it. So kind of this overall dot. Uh, things about you know, what, what was resilient about it, what wasn't resilient, resilient about it would be quite good. And I know Sheldon has, his earlier stuff was talking a little bit about that is uh, in response to disasters and things like this. So I think that there's definitely some potential for all these different things, but maybe, um, I guess one of the things that I'm struggling with is that for the four other ones, is there something really concrete that you're planning to get out of this? You know, like we're gonna get, X, Y, and Z with soils, X, Y, and Z with this. With food security, it's more like saying how these things come together come yeah. together in the context of food security. So I, 
and I think I think that's workable. I've been on other projects where we've had food security as an overarching theme. And so I think that it, we can make this work, but I think it's going to read a little bit differently than the other ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine some kind of figure with the arrows flowing into it or something like that. Yeah. Karen? Yeah, um, I just put a couple notes in the chat. So, so that's one type of um, scaling up that's kind of natural, you know, epi since epidemics have a natural scaling property. <laughs> so, uh, so this would be, uh, well, one of the most interesting kinds of broader impacts for, for the piece that I would be thinking about. Yeah, one thing that I haven't, uh is a question, but it started with a comment, is that, you know, in the, in terms of the outline here, there's, you know, there, it was just like description of the research and we added the structure, which is this substructure about AI themes and application areas. The broader impacts requires us to have these three, but we're not limited to those three, right? So we can, we can, uh, we should read through these uh, bullet points and see if what we're discussing right now you know, how well it fits into, you know, it counts as a kind of knowledge transfer and also as a kind of broadening participation, you know, element to it. But if it's too awkward, we can just add another section, which is about food security or something like that, right? Um, if that makes sense or, or so, you know, whatever it is that, like that we're discussing uh, specifically here. Oh, and I guess related to that, I was interested in the most recent thinking too, because there was some debate earlier about how much Wisconsin specific, and well, of course I'm in Florida. <laughs> so how much Wisconsin specific versus then how much global and like would some things stay in Wisconsin and other things scale up to larger geographic areas or what's your thinking about that now? Oh, um, well, in terms of the, in terms of like the, like kind of application side of it or in terms of like the on the that's what you you don't mean like in terms of research you mean in terms of like the where would these things be deployed or applic like the scope of the application is that correct yeah i mean i guess the people working on the tools could be anywhere but yeah the, for the applications what what are what's your current thinking i'll talk um, go ahead yeah. no no go ahead uh, the, the crops is going to be Corn and soybean, because of the large acre, they're grown pretty much everywhere, especially corn. Um, and then probably potato. All three of those are in AppSim, um, the model we're going to be using. Again, potato is grown pretty much everywhere as well. Uh, maybe cranberry because of the <coughs> expertise we have, but um, it, it's such a small acre crop. Livestock, I think, Joe, it's going to be dairy and beef. Uh, maybe yeah. just dairy. Um, It'll be dairy and beef, yeah. Yeah, again, so um, I'm not sure what... So again... Uh, I guess the point I'm making is we're going to do work here because that's where we are, but these are going to be globally relevant food, um, you know, crops and livestock systems. Um, soil is everywhere and we have forestry everywhere. I just yeah. want to offer a, a comment related to the food security. I'm just uh, maybe for thought. Um, from, on the sensing technology, when it's like phenotyping those animals and, and tracking them along the supply chain, I mean, the, I mean, the technology give us this ability one of the things uh, that we have discussed is about traceability. So how, how you can track back uh, food, at, at least animal food in the supply chain. So if you have a disease outbreak or if something happened back, how sensing technology can give you the ability to have this very well documented through the whole life of the animal. So I don't know how, you know, how, how this, those reliable traceability systems for, for animal uh, production systems would, would tie into the, the food component, just uh, offering some of these. Yeah, so, so what, what my thoughts, oh, sorry, Craig, go ahead. So if I could just, so I, I think you just put 3.4 in here, Kyle, I think you're the one work, are you the one who just put 3.4 in? Yes, yes, okay. I, I'm typing, yeah. So, so here's, I mean, the way I'm thinking about, well, I take that back. It's, I don't want it to be just how I'm thinking about it, but I think what people are saying about food security and what people are, our group would be most well suited to do is, is I actually think if we thought about broader impacts being the lead section in this, having food security be, um, you know, for, well, it's 3.4 here, but making this 3.1, having this an extended discussion 
and take it out of the application area. I mean, we could still have applications to this, but I think that would flow a lot better saying that ultimately the goal of this product is to have these broader impacts, education and workforce, broadening participation, collaboration, knowledge, and also improving food security. So one, one, one thing that, not to be super pedantic, but uh, I don't know, again, this is an NSF thing, but when NSF uses the term broader impact, they don't mean the broader impact of the research, like beyond, like on the, they don't mean like applications and impact on the world in that sense. They, they usually use it in this very specific way, which is about like workforce development, broadening participation, education and outreach. It's not like, uh, uh, so, so the, the guidance is usually that kind of like things that would previously would have just been called like outreach or something like that. Um, and so we have, um, so if there's, it's weird because there's a lot of things it's like, it's not really intellectual merit. It's like, if we did this, it would have this great impact on the world. Right. And it seems like, it seems like the, the correct use of the word broader impact, but usually NSF uses it in this more outreachy kind of way, but you can stretch things in different ways. So I just, we just have to be a little bit careful that, uh, uh, about how we, how we're using it and, and which way, you know, whichever, um, just a warning. I, I've been on panels where sometimes, you know, in, in the end, the panelists are people like us and they might just think of the word broader impact like normal human would, but like the, uh, but some of the, you know, NSF people may remind them what, you know, what's meant by broader impact in NSF speak. So um, I, I do think that the part of food security, which is more on the, on the uh, supply chain stuff fits really well in this application area section. Okay. Okay, I guess it depends. I guess it depends about what direction we want to go, at least from my perspective. And again, I'm not, I'm very used to USDA, but much less so with NSF. So I don't know what to say about this, um, except I, th I think supply chain issues would be really interesting as, but, but maybe we should change this to supply chain rather than food security yeah, and, have, right. and have um, food security be part of the supply chain not broader impacts. I don't know how to, how, I don't yeah. know. And, 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 I, 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 it, can, it can also be something, I mean, the other part that's nice is if the researchy part and the, the, the broader impacts part look nicely integrated. So all of the stuff that we have to do with, oh, uh, okay, uh, Jim says you disagree. So we'll come back and say, but all the stuff that we have to do with, uh, with like trustworthy AI as a theme, what's really nice about what we've talked about mainly is that it, it, it fits very well as an intellectual merit research topic. It fits well for broadening participation. It fits well and looks like an integrated kind of activity. So I think there's a, something similar that we can do in terms of food security, having a, a theme that sits in both places. Um, and then, you know, it could just be that on the application, in this section that's like intellectual merit, we maybe focus a little bit more on, on the, say, supply chain aspect of it because it has a clear connection to, to decision making. And then when we bring it back into broader impacts, maybe we can like re-hit the, the, these other application areas. I don't know. Uh, so Jim, you want to speak up? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just like the things you said that NSF only thinks of as broader impacts are definitely like very important to have in there. So like you'll lose if you don't have those things. But I do think, I mean, I, I've been on interview panels where it's also like what you would naturally think of broader impacts. like what will the research have an impact on the world on? So I do, I mean, and, and yeah. to me, that's equally compelling. So I like having some of that in there. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I tried to say that the, the actual panelists are, are normal people that speak normal yeah. English, you know, and so they will interpret it that way. But the, but, but the NSF guidance is much more in this other thing and, and, you know, program managers get, you know, pedantic about it. So, um, so I don't think it's a problem. I just think, I just wanted to kind of remind people that the NSF has this, yeah. I don't think we disagree really. I mean, <laughs> so, so just if, but I, I guess this makes a big difference on how this is written up. So uh, maybe Paul, Kyle, and, and the three of us want to have a conversation about this or how you want to work this, because it seems like if it's going to be supply chain is we should have Sheldon or somebody else write that up. And then I can write up the food security part in terms of broader impacts take and then you can see how well that fits into this would that be fine or not or how do you want to approach this yeah I, 
I think that's a fine for like starting. We can move text around if we want. So it seems like maybe Karen and Craig and uh, gotcha. um, and Kyping could work a little bit on the this what I'm calling food security here. The other term I was thinking is social relevance or something like that. That's what this whole part. If we're looking for a different term so we don't kind of conflate broader impacts in the NF NSF sense with broader impacts in the normal speak sense. If I, it's something like that term, social relevance or. Yeah, because we have, I don't know, I'm just help, trying to help the conversation a little. But I think you're you right. Have, and we need to have a discussion. And Catherine. Catherine should also be on that. Yeah. I think right, you mentioned yeah, Catherine. Is not right. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking did. about uh, decision support because technically for food security, it's just like a combination of things that you would know whether there'll be, like you have to make a decision in, in between. And if all those layers come together, then you would know that, I don't know, poor crops in A, um, uh, poor pasture and B together with poor prices and A, whatever. So it's like a decision support system, of, you know, basically using all the outputs from all the different, um, um, all the different things. Yeah, I think what would be great is if, if, this, if the, well, you know, we talked, I mean, the supply chain part also, if it was kind of connected, well, I don't know, you told me, but it seems like decision support and supply chain and the kind of technical aspects of the problem, if they went here, uh, uh, you know, uh, could could be nice, but then, but then, you know, there's also a direct connection between, you know, that the social impact and then the whole trustworthy side, right? You know, like, uh, you know, this affects people's lives and knowing about like if there are going to be decisions made, how, you know, how are how are you know how are you assigning utility to different different kinds of outcomes and things like that, right? Um. Well, okay. I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't spend more time on it. We, I think that we we kind of understand. We should try to write it, and then we can figure out how to place that text. So I think if you if you want to write it, uh, you could write it all as one hunk, or, uh, but or you could write it in these two different parts. But maybe just try to like have some subdivision. So there's a more technical aspect, and then there's a more impact on society side. Um, 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 is, is that we're good? Okay. Um, okay. Um, um, I don't know if, uh, <clears throat> how should we use our time? It's 450. In terms of, so, so, Page count wise here, if this, if broader impacts goes to four pages, we currently have, uh, well, if this was one page also, then we do have four pages. So, okay. Um, I'm just checking our, our, our page count. Uh, ten, 10 pages for application areas went to eight. So we gained two and we added one here and then we put one on top. Okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> So, yeah, I mean, in terms of, so we can go through and start uh, tagging uh, people in terms of like helping with the writing. Uh, one thing that, so here's a question, a proposal and a question. We need to, first we need to decide what we're going to use to write. Uh, <clears throat> the two primary candidates are using something like Overleaf and LaTeX or using uh, Google Docs like this document here. Um, my, I think, I don't know, I know that some people, there are lots of people here that are happy with LaTeX, but I don't know if everyone is, and it can be a little bit, you know, awkward at times with, with various things, you know, of this length. So I guess I would propose that we use the Google Doc here, um, unless there's, uh, so that's my proposal, unless anyone was going to scream. Um, in terms of collecting, um, uh, citations that the big advantage that LaTeX for those that use it has is that it's really good at uh, managing citations. There is a tool um, here called Paper Pile, which I've used before. It's actually quite nice. It has a, it's like a, one thing is it requires that you use Chrome. Okay, sorry if you don't like Chrome, but like if you use Chrome, uh, you can, it, it's connected to a bunch of literature systems. So you can search for papers. And when you find them, you just like import the paper and it adds it to some like a uh, database bibliography. And then when you're writing the paper, you can cite it whenever you want. 
and then it will take care of collating the you know the all the references and styling it and ordering it and all of the things that you know you don't want to do by hand um and so so i would propose that we have we use google docs and and paper pile and if people don't want to deal with paper pile they can just like paste the their reference somewhere and one of us that has paper pile will do it uh is it, you know is that any, any objection to that and I also uh yeah um is chris cruzy i don't know if you're st still connected but um you if you're would you be uh agreeable to helping support the some of the citation collection and yada yada and paper pile stuff i'm on it and dina newton has also offered to help so okay so we can send some instructions about like if you don't want to deal with it uh you know whatever like how to kind of you know uh put the necessary information so that you know, Chris can find it and add it to the paper pile thing. Is that um, okay? Um, where are we? <clears throat> Does anyone have things that they would like to bring up that we haven't talked about right now? There's a little bit about the management plan. Um, we need to come up with a concrete proposal and try to do that soon and distribute it and then uh, see what people say. Um, You'll put our writing into the pre okay. Yeah, thank you, Kaiping. Um, um, <clears throat> um, let's see what to say. Um, yeah, the well. I don't know. No, no one has. Does anyone have any immediate burning questions or think or like concerns or anything about where that's going right now? All right, then. I would. I would suggest then is the the crop slash livestock, et cetera, the, the use inspired areas. We've got stuff to get written, um, ASAP. Um, and Kai Ping, I want to reach out to you separately. I have an idea for a graphic, and I want to kind of bounce it off of you on how to make that cyclical doc by way of the flow of information. Karen has got a question. Do you want deadlines? Because Chris yes. has a deadline, <laughs> and Karen has a question. Um, yeah, so so I was wondering, so I haven't talked with a crops group much. Should I just like write a paragraph and put it in there and see how it might fit with other things? Yeah, I can send you an email of, of some stuff I forwarded that you can see if it fits in. I have a feeling from your documents that you're probably more fitting in on the li on the remote sensing component, uh, but at a global larger scale than we're thinking. But um, it might save you some time. It might. I see you fitting under that social relevance or whatever we want to call that latter part. But I'll, I'll send you what we have, and you can decide. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah. So one thing that uh, I think is a little bit relevant for the writing is that, may, and I don't know the best way to deal with this right now, but and this this table I think is pretty useful. <laughs> um, it would be, you know, if if we agreed on say the contents of this table, then then the people writing like the section on crops or livestock, it would be, you know, great that we like somehow hit on these points. Um, and the the other thing that's really important is to go back. And read the stuff in blue here about uh, oh, where does it? Uh, um, sorry, where? You know, we need to we need to hit on on all of these topics, right? And I kind of distributed them in different ways, but uh, we just need to make sure we hit on all this stuff. So you know, before writing a lot, just you know, revisit the the, the points that they want to see. Um, and then also maybe take a, a gander at this table, you know, um, um, and uh, it might, this was meant a little bit more for the AI people, you know, like trying to extract, uh, you know, things so that we can, you know, talk about the AI themes, but, um, okay. Um, and I wrote less in terms of the uh, food security here, just because I had some, uh, I wasn't sure if SNAP was still the thing. We hadn't had that discussion that we just had. So this food security needs to be revisited uh, on this table. Um, Chris? Okay. I'm not sure how, exactly how to articulate, but I'm in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about like, there's a lot of language developed around 
how to talk about climate change. And I'm a little bit worried that we're not actually using it very much of it, right? Like we're not really, we don't really talk about these are like specific mitigation things. These are specific adaptation things um, or communication or like there is language. I'm sure in all the different pieces, it's going to come up, but I'm afraid that at a higher level, it's not going to be apparent. So I'm not exactly sure what we do about this. Yeah, that's a good point. So I think regarding that, uh, in the proposal, proposed work section of the Google Drive that we have, one is I put a, a section papers for reference, which I thought would be some of the papers that people have you know, shared or behind paywalls and stuff. I think it would be potentially nice if we put some of the papers here so that uh, we have like, for instance, if someone from the kind of application side wants to talk to someone on the more AI side and they have an idea of a paper that's relevant, you know, they could put it there, give it a descriptive title and that might help uh, us, you know, uh, converge. Um, the other thing is that there's this document here from USDA, which is like a very high level, you know, document, but I also had highlighted early on things that I, that caught my eye as being relevant for this AI Institute, you know, proposal. And there's language there that's, you know, this is like USDA style language. Uh, um, and, you know, this is, you know, they're using climate smart and the, and the title here. Right. So, so I think that this could be useful to kind of prime yourself in terms of language and then we'll see, but I would guess that a lot of what you're talking about that very high level language should, we should really hit it in the first two pages. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then, you know, kind of come back to it again at, at various stages, but yeah, does that, I think, I think it makes sense. I'm just raising it in the beginning, just so that, you know, when they, when at the end, they have to describe <laughs> what it is and compared to everything else, like they'll somehow be able to relate it back. Yeah. Another thing maybe we should do, and I'm just going to go ahead and start this document here is, uh, 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 review checklist or something i'm just thinking like uh uh you know climate change language or uh you know this is a checklist of you know things we should check or hit on in the proposal uh beyond just the uh you know um uh, so yeah, uh, uh, you know, the, so, you know, various, and then there's a bunch of things here, like, is it going to come across well to like a uh, AI person that this is looks like, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, whatever, uh, you know, and then there's very, various other, other issues that we could put a, a list of different, you know, please, it, you know, add to this list, you know, uh, <laughs> um, you know what I mean? So, so something like, uh, if you think it's something that we should hit on that, that we do, you know, um, so there's like, you know, impact on society. There's, uh, there's the, uh, will it, uh, scale, you know, or how does it scale? Um, you know, why and institute and, and not, you know, and small grants, you know, et cetera, right? Um, okay, Kai Ping needs to leave, thank you. Uh, do we need to set a deadline for first dress? Yeah, uh, yeah, so what do you think about uh, Monday? Yeah. Okay, um, sorry, Kai Ping, if we this Kai Ping left already, but we can send that out in an email. Um, I think Monday sounds yeah reasonable. Um, okay, Monday, Kaiping. Okay, um, what is that? And yep, yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, okay, and then so the earlier deadline will be trying to tag people here and there, um, and feel free, obviously, to add your name to any of the topics. Um, Is that, are we, are we good then? What do you think? Yeah. Okay, and then, uh, you know, on the side, we're gonna need to, one thing I guess I'll mention is that we're gonna need to get various letters of collaboration and figure out what other 
what other kind of people that are like unfunded people are part of this whole deal um, and then incorporate them into the text. Um, and uh, there are a few things that have uh, popped up in that, in that uh, discussion. Um, <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, I hope this was uh, useful and uh, I apologize that uh, didn't do my part for last Monday to make it. Uh, that was a poor use of your time. I apologize. Um, um, yes, there, there is a template that there's like a dedicated text. Uh, and <clears throat> I think probably what we should do is have, have a somewhat organized process for requesting the letters and keeping track of them. I think we have a spreadsheet. Um, so we don't want to just completely, you know, do that in an unstructured way. It's too hard to keep track of. Um, the, the, the most important thing is the, the this prescribed, the, the letters can only include this one paragraph uh, that's prescribed. So, okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, then I think that's uh, good for today.